Greetings fellow Flight Simmer and welcome to the reaction review with me Gripper Sim. The big mystery for Flight Simmers is the FMC, the Flight Management Computer. I've taken it upon myself this week to figure it out to some degree, at least to remove some of the mystery in order to show you how to get from A to B using the FMC on autopilot. I've discovered some pitfalls and I've created a flight plan to show you in the simplest way possible to begin flying with X-Plane's free Zebu Mod 737-800. This is not for real flying. The only real flying qualification that I have is in light twins and single engine pistons up to 5,700 kilograms. So we're both in the same boat here. And I intend to make some more tutorials on the 737 if this goes well, but for newbies and in the simplest way possible. Yes, simplicity is the art of sophistication. Speaking of keeping things simple, I am not necessarily going to adhere to real life procedures on the 737. I am not necessarily going to fly the aircraft as it should be in real life. I am not necessarily going to obey the rules of the air. All we want to do in this simple tutorial is find the easiest way possible to fly from Manchester, England to Dublin, Ireland using the flight management computer and the autopilot. That is all. In hindsight, the first frustrations I've actually had trying to use the FMC is the data in it. When you start up X-Plane, they don't give you the updated data because that costs money. So what I've done is I've updated my FMC with proper data. Uh, also, I have got charts which match the data because I think in the past it, there was mismatches and I couldn't understand why it wasn't working. So that's the first thing I've done is I've gone to Navigraph. Now, I have absolutely no association with Navigraph whatsoever. This is not an advertisement. This has just made it easier for me. Thank you, by the way, to the members. You don't necessarily need Navigraph to follow this tutorial, by the way, but I just want to be safe and make sure all the data matches. So try it without Navigraph first. I don't want you wasting money unnecessarily. Now, this is the American site for Navigraph and it gives a monthly subscription of $8.30. I'm paying about 10 But anyway, you can disconnect after you've paid your first month and you've got your updated data. I'm going to stick with it. Also, the reason I got Navigraph is because I can explain to you, uh, the viewer, uh, how things are working. So before we go into Navigraph and have a look, let's have a look at some basics first. And this is where uh, most people get stuck. Let's have a look. When you are flying, you take off the runway, okay? Then you do a departure. So you climb away from the runway. That's called a standard instrument departure. Then you get to your cruising altitude. That's called the cruise en route. And these are airways. So you follow a predetermined uh, heading and altitude at your top of climb, at your cruise altitude. Then you come close to the airport and you follow a star, a standard terminal arrival route. And that is predetermined waypoints that are also put into the computer. It takes you down. And then you do your approach onto the runway either visual or an ILS instrument landing system or whatever it is. So let's have a look over here. So uh, ICAO, you see I have above there, and we're taking off from EGCC, Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. That is the ICAO identifier for Manchester. Now, every country has its own ICAO identifier. In England, it starts with EG. In Ireland, it's EI. America, it's K, and so on and so forth. Now, we're going to depart a runway and this is saying we're going to depart runway 05 left. Okay, L is for left, R is for right. Then we have a SID, a standard instrument departure. And this particular SID is called, if I can pronounce it, uh, ASMI 1S, A S M I 1S. That's called a standard instrument departure. Again, we look at this further. Then we have a series of waypoints and airways. Okay, a waypoint again is heading and altitude determined, which we'll put into the computer. Then we have airways. Airways are simply highways in the sky. Okay, then we have various airways and waypoints to follow. And then we come closer to the runway and we join what's called a STAR, a standard terminal arrival route. Now, we're not going to do a STAR in this tutorial. We're just going to land into Dublin. We're simply going to make up a STAR. And we're going to use the ILS into Dublin, runway 28. Uh, and that's it for the moment. So I just want you to understand those three things, a SID, cruise en route or airways, and a STAR and an approach. We're going to put all these waypoints and sits and stars into the flight management computer. OK, let's have a look at Navigraph. The good thing about Navigraph is this gives simmers the real world up to date charts and upper airways and lower airways and all the stuff you need to navigate a jet. So this is really, really interesting for simmers. OK, now I'm just going to show you something that happened to me once just to explain it to you. I went to Kisha here as a waypoint and to descend to Latmo and it had to be 3000 feet to Latmo in order to join the uh, instrument landing system. OK, and it would it just kept disconnecting uh, before I got to Latmo. That's because the aircraft couldn't descend from the altitude 
to 3,000 feet in time. So it just disconnects. It goes, oh, feck you. I don't care. So this is this is one of the frustrations uh, that I had. But this route will work for you because I'm going to do it now in a minute. I know you're waiting. Um, so let's just click on Manchester and have a look at the SID. This is the magenta line or the pink line here. So let's have a look at that. And again, these are real world charts. So I'm going to look at the SIDs. These are all the different SIDs for the different runways, but we're using uh, ASMIM, okay? And that works for runway uh, 05. So uh, I can transpose that over the airways, which is great. So look here. So when we engage autopilot, we're going to follow that magenta line or that pink line, okay? Don't worry about all the other stuff. I know it looks complicated and scary. Forget about all that. Don't worry about that yet. We're building that. It has restrictions here. Look, it says, warning, do not climb above 5,000 feet until instructed by ATC. Now, the flight management computer and the autopilot will know this and follow it. It'll follow a heading of 299. It won't go above 5,000 feet. And then it'll go to Exoboro and then follow a heading of 261 and then to ASMIM. And we'll depart ASMIM and then we'll go to WAL. Okay. Uh, while is a VOR, that's another day's work entirely. Let's just use it as a waypoint for today. Uh, and we'll type in while in the FMC and then we'll fly uh, direct, I think, to Pina. OK, uh, we could use the airway if we wanted, but I think we're going to be fine direct. Uh, now, let's have a look at uh, the headings and the altitudes there. Great. Now, Pina, uh, that's our first waypoint. We're going to put Pina in the FMS, the flight management uh, computer, sorry, the FMC. I keep saying S. Uh, and there's the airway, there's the altitude we should be at, and that's the heading we should be at. Now, uh, on the FMC, I'm going to go from Penal direct to Bagzil, or Bagzo, okay? And the FMC is going to put in automatically all the waypoints in between Penal and Bagzo for us automatically. And we'll see that as we run the FMC. Then for Bagso, we've got to descend down to Lapmo. Now, thankfully, it's worked for me. It will get to Lapmo. I may have to apply the, uh, the air brake, uh, but it works. OK, so it won't disconnect on us. And then we're going to go flight straight into Dublin runway 28 for the ILS. What does that look like? And this is the approach chart for runway uh, 28 on the ILS. So I'm going to hit on approach, APP for approach. I'm looking for runway 28. Click on that. And that will give me the actual same, same up-to-date chart as pilots get. Uh, now, uh, let's just zoom in. Don't worry about all the other stuff. There's only a few things you'll need here, OK, because we're not getting complicated. The only things we need here is, first of all, this frequency here, 111.35. Now, this is the localizer frequency for the radio navigation, and I put that into nav1, you'll see as we do it. The next thing I need, my final approach course, which is 279. So we have to have that. And also, when we get over LAPMO, we want to be at 3,000 feet uh, to join the ILS instrument landing system. And then there's a go-around procedure as well, but don't worry about that today. The most frustrating part of this process for me was actually understanding how to flight plan uh, before I put all the details into the flight computer. Uh, now, there is another one called Sky Vector. I put links in the description below, which is free. And also, don't forget to install, install Avitab. Uh, for the Zebo mod. Now, make sure you're on a 737, uh, preferably the Zebo mod 800X, and make sure you're in Manchester, and make sure you're lined up on runway 05L when you start up X Plane 11. Here we are lined up on 05 left in Manchester. Now, one little thing I want to show you before we go uh, the controllers kept jerking. Uh, when I was flying the aircraft. For example, here's just a, a demo. So I had my auto throttle armed, which controls vertical navigation, and all of a sudden the controls jerked. See that? Disconnected the auto throttle and it messed things up on me. So it's very, very important to calibrate your controls, not only in the Windows operating system or your operating system, but in X-Plane as well, and that will prevent that, I hope. If anyone else has problems with this or any other fixes, do please let me know. So let's go. Welcome to the 737 cockpit in the Zebo mod. We'll be using Avitab, which is part of the installation with the Zebo mod. So I'm just going to show you something very quickly here. We will be referring to Avitab from time to time. OK, so there's a little right section here and I noticed you can put in your departure and you can put in your arrival. So that's Manchester to Dublin and it'll give you a route, but it won't give you the stars and the SIDS. But anyway, the other important thing is fuel, weight and balance. Let's go into payload. And we'll be visiting this page from time to time. It gives you your payload, zero fuel, weight fuel, etc. Where we have no payload, we're just going to use the fuel, 11 tons, and their center of gravities and stuff. So we'll have a look at that later. Now, uh, let's have a look at the flight management computer. Click on the FMC button 
and it gives us some information about the aircraft. Just be aware there might be more than one page, okay? Uh, it gives you the nav data here is very important. It's just saying it's in date. If it wasn't in date, down here in the scratch pad, it would say nav data out of date. The reason I've downloaded the Navigraph data is because I had a mismatch between the charts I had and the data in the flight computer, and that caused all sorts of confusion. Now, uh, let's have a look here. It kind of leads you along, pause in it, position in it, uh, initial position, and uh, airport reference it's looking for. We're in Manchester, which is Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. Hit in ref button there, there we go. And it puts in the GPS coordinates. Route is next, it kind of leads you along again. Origin, any square box you have to type in. And you see before we had EGCC there, just pop it back in and it's gone from the scratch pad. Destination, now I'm gonna play around with this, okay? I'm entering, we're going to Dublin. So Echo India Delta Whiskey should be, and I'm hitting it up there and it says not in database. So it should be Echo India Delta Whiskey, okay? So uh, let's clear it and let's put in the wrong airport. Let's put in uh, Whiskey Foxtrot, so for Waterford. Uh, and I'm just going to pop it in there so that I, I've, I'm entering in the wrong airfield and I go, oh damn, okay, that's the wrong one. All you do is you enter in again at the scratch pad, Echo India, Delta Whiskey, and you pop it back in. And that's for most things. Hit the execute button if that ever, if that ever lights up, just hit execute. Don't worry about the rest. Perfinit is next. And I'm, this is looking for the gross weight here. Okay, anything with a square box you have to put in, okay. Uh, now, over to Avitab for the gross weight. Now, I've made a mistake here. This is a replay. So, look, it should be 54 uh, tonnes. Okay, I, I put in 55, but watch this mistake here. It's not a big problem here with this simulator. Put in 55 in the zero fuel weight box. But don't worry about all that. It's not going to affect our flight, okay? Uh, plant fuel, uh, I, I, you know, I just put in eight here. Uh, and that'll, that'll do. This stuff, I'm kind of hairy on, but just fill out the boxes. Reserves, you can put 2.5 or something. Uh, and the cost index, incidentally, uh, I, I think it goes from a zero to a hundred, and I'm putting in six here. So uh, if I put in fifty, the aircraft would fly faster in the cruise. That's it's just for money. So don't worry about the cost index. I just put six. You can put fifty if you like, and it'll fly a bit faster. Uh, cruise altitude that is important. I'm putting in twenty thousand feet here, or flight level two zero. Okay. Uh, flight level 200, excuse me, hit the execute button again. Now, cruise winds, icy deviation, okay, I make up a cruise wind uh, 270 at uh, 20. See the way I have the slash there? And it will fit into cruise slash wind. There we go. Um, and now I haven't looked at the weather up at the upper winds, but that's another day's work. This is all, you don't have to fill all of this stuff in at all. Icy deviation, I put in seven. Um, and then it fills out the rest, but don't worry about that. Uh, transition altitude says 5,000 feet. That's another day's work as well. So I'm going to skip a lot of stuff. Uh, some stuff like the, uh, what I'm doing here is it has the uh, pressure altitude in inches of mercury. Okay, 29.92. Now I'm going to change that to what's called hectopascals. That's European uh, pressure setting. And I'm changing that to 1020. I've to do that three times. Now it is important in real life, but it's not really going to affect our flight plan today. I'm just putting it in out of habit. Okay and uh, that's the backup. And then we're going to put it in on the first officer side. This is something you can skip. Uh, this is another day's work again that I have to explain to you what's the pressure settings and how it works. Okay, back to the flight management computer. Now I'm going to next uh, look at the N1 limit, okay? Now don't get flustered with this. All we're gonna do is gonna put 33 up here. We don't have to enter this, but this is just to preserve the life of the engine so it doesn't have too much power on takeoff when you hit the autopilot or in the climb, okay? Uh, we're not gonna worry about that today. I'm just putting in 33, forget about the rest. Let's not complicate things. Let's go to takeoff and hit that button. Now, flaps. We want five degrees of flaps. I'm putting in five in the scratch pad, bam, filled out. Happy days. Now, when I do that, I think I should put the flaps to five degrees. And there we go, five degrees is set on the flaps. And the flaps will start coming down quite slow at first. By the way, if you see that needle split into two, you're in trouble. That means one flap is going down and one flap isn't, for example. Anyway, there we go. Flaps coming down to five degrees. Happy days. Now, back to our FMS. Now, the next thing here is C of G. It's asking for the centre of gravity of the aircraft, and I'm pretty sure that's the uh, gross weight centre of gravity of 21.4. I'm pretty sure about that, so let's not make a mistake this time. And uh, I'm going to put in 21.4 into the FMS and click bam, in. Now it comes up a trim here, 5.25, what's that? Uh, the trim we want when we take off, we don't have to trim, so we're going to put in 5.25 on the actual trim wheel, and you can see here, uh, it has a 
green marker, that's nor in the normal operating range, and I'm going to put it to about 5.25. Next, it's asking us for our V speeds, V1, VR, and V2. And when I enter these in, the computer has already calculated these speeds. And what are these V speeds? V for velocity, and V1 is the speed beyond which takeoff should no longer be aborted. After V1, you should continue to take off. If you don't, and you try to stop in the runway, and you go beyond V1, you will not be able to stop by the end of the runway. The next speed is VR, and that's 138 knots. And that's the speed when you actually apply back pressure on the control column to unstick the aircraft from the runway. And you apply the back uh, pressure on the control column between 2.5 and 3 degrees per second. The next one then is V2, and this is your takeoff safety speed. That's the speed at which the aircraft may safely be climbed with one engine inoperative. And during takeoff, the pilot monitoring will call out these speeds as you go. I know those of you who are new to this are going, oh my God, this is too much. Don't worry about that. I guarantee you I've just done it. Do it five or six times and you'll be flying through all of this stuff. Now, next departure. Uh, I'm going to hit the departure button and look, there's all the SIDs and the runways. Zero five left. Bam. And there's a SID we chose earlier on. Asmin, Asmi 1S or whatever you call it. Don't worry about the trans. Okay. And that's it. You hit route. Just be aware that there are two pages here. Okay. Uh, then hit activate, hit execute, until the light goes off, and we're going to go to the next page, okay, because it's two pages. And now we're going to start planning the rest of our waypoints as we discussed earlier. That's the SID done, and the SID ends at AMSIM, so we're going to go for AMSIM to WAL via the L10 to penal. Let's put that in the computer. So type in WAL and the scratch pad to the to section, execute and it automatically puts in direct. Happy days. So if you don't put anything in the VIA section, it just puts it in direct. The VIA is for the airway. So I'm going to put an L10 in the airway, bam. Now it has discontinuity. That means it can't, it doesn't know what to do. So I'm telling it to go from L10 to penal. There we go, bam. So we're going to the penal waypoint via the L10 airway. Next, we're going to go from penal to Bagso via the UL70 airway. Okay, so let's pop that in. So next, uh, we're going to put in Bagzo, okay, which is going to be in the two section, and it goes direct, but let's change that, okay, because we're going to get it to put in all the waypoints from Pino to Bagzo. So if I put in UL70 in the VIA section, bam, it's going to uh, hit execute, it's going to fit in all the waypoints from penal to bag so automatically because it's all all the data that's on the charts from Levograph is in the flight management computer. The last leg is we want to go to Lapmo. So Lapmo, I'm going to put it into the two side because we're going to go direct to Lapmo, no airways, and hit execute. Then from Lapmo, I want to go to the approach page next into this ILS. And we want to be at Lapmo 3000 feet. Now the computer will calculate that first. So go to departure arrival. Hit the arrival button, not that one, the one below it for Dublin, because that's where we're going. And then you see, all there's all the information. Now, there's 12 pages here. We want runway 28, the ILS for runway 28. So keep hitting the next page, and I'm going to bang on ILS 28, execute. And that's it. There's no stars. I'm not going to do a star. We'll do that another day, because we just want to get from A to B today. And that's pretty much everything. That's it. Now, you do this four or five times, and you really get the hang of it. Let's look at the legs page next. Okay, so let's just check everything. Okay, so here's all my, uh, all of the four, four pages of all the waypoints, okay? Now it has lots of details in these waypoints. First of all, we'll just go back to page two, we'll go up to first page here. That's the standard instrument departure. Okay, there's all the waypoints up to as, as MIM, up to 5,000 feet, so it should level off at 5,000 feet. And uh, it also has, for example, it has the distance for the each leg, it has the speed we should be flying at, and it has the flight level we should be flying at, and all the directions we should be flying at. So there's uh, Raymax, Octog, Basco, Lapmo, and they're all filled in first automatically. There's Lapmo 3,000 feet, so I've got to be at 3,000 feet or below to join the ILS. Um, so that's one way of checking all the legs. Now, uh, let's just have a better look at our flight plan using the navigation display. So that's the navigation display just here. And we're going to change that view to plan view, which is that button there. So just to show you the button where it is, that's where it is there. So let's just zoom in here and have a look. We're going to use the navigation display to uh, keep an eye on our route. Okay. Um, 
along with the uh, what's on the FMC basically is on the navigation display and it just shows it in a graphical way so let's go to plan mode here there we go there's different modes and you'll notice down uh, on the flight management computer there it says step that just changes when you change to plan mode it gives you the step so if I hit step the center of the navigation display is each waypoint so if you see we're just checking the route all the way there we go there's wall penal and all the waypoints in between penal and bagso are also automatically entered because we use the airway T slash D there means top of descent, so that's when we're going to start to descend. Then there's a deceleration phase where the computer will automatically decelerate the aircraft. Uh, and that's just a nice way. You can continuously hit the step button and it'll go all the way uh, down to Dublin. And then there's even a go around plan there as well, which is automatically put in for your go around procedures. But we won't be worrying about that today. Great. OK, let's put it back to map mode. So we can keep an eye on our progress and we can zoom in and out there. All the way out, all the way back in again. Happy days. We already put our cruising altitude of 20,000 feet in the FMC. You put it here as well. Very important to leave it there. And the third place you put it is for the uh, cabin pressure. So we're going to 20,000 feet and put it up there. And then uh, your landing altitude up is about 250 feet. Uh, it's a little bit lower than that by a few feet, but not by much. Now, let's have a look at the autopilot. Now, uh, very important you put 20,000 feet, your top of climb, altitude, your cruise altitude in there. Otherwise, if you put five, it'll stop and level off at five. So it'll follow the altitudes all the way up to 20,000 feet. Next, we're going to put both flight directors on. They have to be on. LNAV and VNAV. LNAV is lateral nav, VNAV is vertical navigation and our auto throttle. Okay, now when we hit autopilot, the CMD button, the command button, you're on autopilot. That's it. It's going to follow the entire route all the way to Dublin down the ILS with a little help. OK, now I'm going to put in my uh, runway heading here. Uh, I think it's 052. And also, if you're wondering, there's an outer little switch there and you can switch it from 10 to 30. So that's when the autopilot turns is 10 degrees, 50 to 15, 20 to 25 to 30 degrees. So that's what I'm doing. That's the outer switch, if you like, if you can see that. So that's all that is. It tells the autopilot how much it'll actually turn, what the bank angle is. I'm not going to do any checklists because the video will go on too long. Maybe that's another day's work. But for the moment, I just noticed something here on the uh, navigation display. The TCAS is off and that's a warning system for other aircraft in the air. So if you go down here, there's a transponder and I'm going to put it to T or RA. And I'm sure we'll see some traffic action later. I'm turning on some lighted cheer. That's where some of the lights are down below. We're going now, lads. We're going soon. Lads and lassies. OK. Uh, put the control column back and just review the autopilot there. All I'm going to do after takeoff is I'm going to hit the command button. We already have LNAV and we already have VNAV and we have the auto throttle armed. Again, LNAV is for lateral navigation, VNAV is for vertical. Off with the parking brake and I'm adding full power manually. There is a TOGA button that does it all for you. That's another day's work. We'll do that another day. And 40% uh, on the power. That's just to stabilise the engines, to make sure they're stable, should I say. And I'm manually putting in full power now. Now, you're going to see, when we put in full power, it's going to go above the red line, OK? Uh, above the red line. When you press the toga button, it avoids that. Uh, we'll talk about that another day. See, I'm redlining it there. I shouldn't be doing that. OK, I'm pushing forward the control column, as you can see. Uh, there's 80 knots. I'm just keeping it straight with the rudder pedals now. Trottle back a bit. And rotate at 2.5 to 3 degrees per second. Positive rate. There's our positive rate. Gear up. And I'm just flying it manually now. Four Lots of trimming, a little bit of trimming. N1's come on automatically for me. Now I'm going to neutralise the gear handle to stop the hydraulics from pushing One it up. Thousand. And I'm going to hit the command button. Now, hands off the controls. My hands are off the controls, feet off the rudder pedals. Now, I have the altitude set to 20,000 feet there. I'm going to leave it at 20,000. Uh, I'm taking the flaps up bit by bit. Oh, look at the throttle. It jerked again. Oh, let us know in the comments what that is, please. I, OK, that's all good. Everything's fine. I'm just sitting back watching now, practically. Gear is now up on no lights. Flaps are up. And it's turning automatically. Now, remember, it was turning into the heading of uh, 299. So it's taking a left turn following the SID. Let's have a look here at the flight computer. 
I'm just going to adjust my views here for you so you can see. So there we are. Uh, that's the waypoint it's at. And it see it has 5,000 feet. I think it's saying there it's going to level off 5,000 because of that restriction. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we're just going to look in here. We're bombing up to uh, 5,000 feet. And there's the displays there for all the autopilot functions. So yeah, that's it. It's just going to go the whole way. It's taking back the power automatically. That's auto throttle. That's what that does. Oh, and now of course it's disconnected and I'm, I'm accelerating. Okay, so I'm going to physically take back the power manually because I'm busting uh, 250 knots now. I'm supposed to be at 250 knots uh, and below. Uh, now I'm, I'm hoping that this will take me back on profile when I take the power back manually. Let's try it again. Okay, there we go. Now I'm at 272 knots. Brilliant. I've, I'm getting I'm getting the ticket lots. I'm getting the speeding tickets. No doubt about it. I'm in big, big trouble if this was if this was for real. I'd say because the restriction is 250. No oh God. So I really got to keep you got to keep an eye on the autopilot panel. If that's the right name for it. Oh man, so much to learn. But we will learn together. Of course, as you can see, it's leveled off for 5,000 feet, which is that restriction uh, on the flight plan. So few. Now, usually you'd have the altitude up to 5,000 and you, you, you know, manually change that. But I'm going to leave it at 20,000 feet, okay? So it's following everything, uh, except for my controls, which are not calibrated somehow. Uh, they keep turning off the autopilot. So it's just something to be aware of. It's just something that caught me off guard. And I was getting really, really confused. I didn't know if it was me doing something wrong or something else. We're coming up on Waypoint Expo now, as you can see in the FMS. And here's on the plate Expo. And when it gets to Expo, it's going to turn on to a heading of 261. And then on to Asmim. I might fast forward parts of this, but just for the moment there, uh, we are now 10 nautical miles to Asmim. See, it's both displayed on the navigation display and the flight management computer. Okay, now we are two miles from uh, Asmim. And I want to show you one little thing. Uh, we see here uh, Liverpool. We're just coming up to Liverpool. Echo Golf Golf Papa is the ICAO identifier for Liverpool. And the white diamond is traffic, which is 5,100 feet below us. So he's obviously just taken off. And there's, of course, we've got one point or 0.8 miles to go to Asim. And it's going to start climbing now. The weather add on, by the way, I'm using a SkyMax Pro. And it actually works quite well. And they've updated it for a Vulcan. Okay, here we go. It's starting to climb and we're going to Wallasey now and it wants us to climb. It's going to climb at uh, 288 knots to flight level 200, 20,000 feet. And it's going to continue like that all the way. It's going to follow all the waypoints. So I might fa fast forward this very, very shortly. Uh, now, the, the profile of the climb, how does it know how much power to put on? Uh, it's all worked out from the flight management computer. You can intervene it, of course, but that's another day's work. And you can see there it has top of climb and it changes so it's it's altering its vertical profile if you like and that's what vnav is for and the auto throttle along with the autopilot control all of that also we have a green banana that's when we reach our altitude or that's the place in space where we reach our altitude and tc means there that's our top of climb so we're at we're then from then on out we're in the cruise Oh, I know Southwest don't fly from Manchester to Dublin, but I do hate the way the airlines try to sell you shite when you're flying. We're coming close to our top of descent now. There are checklists, but we're just going to do the bare essentials here, okay? First of all, the init reference page in the flight management computer. Click on that, and it'll give you a reference speeds for the flap settings you want. So I'm going to select 30, and it's saying 148 knots. So when I have 30 flaps on my final approach, I want to have 148 knots. Now, you'll see here it has ref, and it'll show you that in the speed tape. So that's the approach speed we want. Now, at some point, I'll get the full checklists for, you know, after takeoff, cruise, and before descent and descent and finals and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, uh, you can put the engines on continuous, and this is all, this is all for another day's work. Uh, you can put the line. Oh, 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 trouble, trouble. I have trouble. Oh, traffic, traffic. That wasn't much of a warning. Where is he? Uh, he's to our left. Uh, where is he? Let's have a look. There he is, there he is. Fascinating. 
that's interesting the way that works. Okay, we're coming close to ending the cruise and we're coming to the top of our descent. So let's get ready for landing. I'm putting the auto brakes on to three. That's automatic braking once you touch the ground. And uh, there are a lot of checklists involved. I'm not going to go through them, but uh, reset MCP altitude. MCP altitude? Is that the mode control panel? Oh, we're getting close to the top of descent now. We've got to start descending. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. If I didn't set my altitude back down, it won't descend. So this is very important. This caused me great confusion. So I'm, for this demo, I'm putting it all the way down to zero. I, I don't think you do that in real life. You kind of step down. But I'm putting it down to zero to simplify things. So put that down to zero, very important, or it will not descend. That caught me out many, many times. So there's the autopilot reducing the throttle just in time. Just in time. So let's have a look at our approach plate. We're approaching Bagzo and we want to be at Latmo at 3,000 feet. Very important. 279 is your approach course and our ILS frequency is 111.35. We're going to have to plug those in. Let's get our ILS frequency ready first. 111.35. Now you have to have it in both boxes for the captain and autopilot. So there is a, a standby button and an active. Make sure ILS is an active. You can click the mode button to make sure it's ILS and you can change the frequency to 111.35 and the co-pilot side as well. Otherwise it ain't going to work. Make sure both courses are set for 279. That's the approach course for the ILS. So all the way we've had auto throttle armed, vertical navigation armed, lateral navigation armed and of course the autopilot CMD. Now when we come in and we approach the ILS and we're going to intercept it, I'm going to hit the app button, the approach button. That's it. That's all I'm going to press and it's going to look after the rest. When the aircraft descends, it actually descends at idle thrust. So when it pushes the nose down, it accelerates and it's going to go too fast. So we're going to have to intervene. Drag required. So we actually pull out the air brakes. You may also be wondering why uh, it is registering 36%. That's because the outer fan of the engine is windmilling and we're at actually at idle power. So if we're descending at idle power, we've got to lower the nose, but the aircraft will speed up. So hence the speed brakes. So uh, some people say it's bad flying to use speed brakes, but in fact, it's worse to level off and then having to add power because you're wasting fuel. Okay, so we're coming up to bag zone now and uh, we just keep an eye on everything. Just make sure your autopilot doesn't disconnect on you like it does with my control column. So uh, again, let me know in the comments because that keeps that did happen to me again after recalibrating everything. Okay, so we're 235 knots and we should be at a 184 knots. So we're going too fast. So I'm going to have to apply the speed brakes again. Now it does come up in the FMC, but you know, there's the speed brakes, by the way. They're lift dumpers effectively. Uh, which will slow the aircraft down. So we're fast forwarding a little bit. We're coming up to Bagso and now we're turning on to Lapmo and nothing to see. It's just ex except the aircraft is following the descent profile very nicely and we're coming right up now to Lapmo. So we're going to turn. We're at 244 knots. We should be 184. So we're going to have to continue to slow down with the speed brakes and the flaps actually. So what speed can we lower the flaps at? We can lower the flaps at uh, 250 knots up to five flaps so i'm going to slowly lower the flaps to five now to disengage the autopilot by the way that's the button okay i have a button on my control yoke to disconnect the autopilot you can see the flaps coming down there and we're starting to slow down so i'm going to start lowering the flaps uh, early on uh, at least what i think is early on but they're not we're not over speeding the flaps uh okay there it goes off this the speed brake and i'm just trying to time it so you know, we, we get 3,000 feet at Latmo, at the right speed. Fast forward again, and now we're going to do the right turn onto the ILS. Now, um, it's turning already, it's looking good. And now for those of you who haven't used ILS or haven't got a clue about the ILS, it effectively takes you right onto the runway. You can do it manually or automatically. I'll probably do a separate video uh, later on at some point for a tutorial in the ILS. So this is just a general overview, guys, just to give you an idea of the FMC. So there's a lot I've skipped, um, but we want to just get from A to B. Now, I'm going to hit the approach button the minute I decide that we're established on the ILS. And everything's still automatically. You'll see these two diamond indicators here. That's the lateral navigation and the vertical navigation I want to keep for the ILS, and they should be in that little center bar, both of them. So we've leveled off at 3,000 feet and we're 170 knots and it's turning nicely. And that's great. So I'm just anticipating when to press the approach button. So it says I have a speed of 161 knots. Okay, we're not far off. We try and make that back. Uh, it's only 10 knots. That's Hoth Head coming into Dublin. 
So that's my first visual confirmation of where I am, if you, even if you could call that a visual confirmation. So the approach button, uh, I'm just going to get ready to press it, and we're just about to get on those two diamond bars. There we go. And it comes up saying single channel VO warlock. So we're on the ILS. Now, is this the way they do it in real life or not? I don't know uh, yet, because I do have some resources to find out. Um, although it'll be very embarrassing to ask a real 747 pilot, or 737 pilot. See, I don't even know the name of the aircraft. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. Uh, so we're just following, it's just gonna bring us all the way down now onto the ILS. I'm just sitting here, I'm not touching the controls. I haven't touched the controls since after I, I switched on the autopilot. Now, I hope, um, do let me know in the comments uh, how you feel about this tutorial. Has it helped you uh, or has it even confused you even more? Because I would like to make uh, very simple tutorials about uh, flying these big jets with the flight management computer um, and maybe even stream it in the future. So that's my end. That's that's my motivation for doing it. And my, my most highest motivation is to be able to show you how you guys had to fly these on flight simulator. So it's still, it's descending perfectly. We're right on the ILS now, 170 knots. So we're going a bit too fast. Uh, now, remember our V-ref speed, we're going way above that. Now, this is a mistake I've made. And I'm going to start lowering flaps now shortly in order to get that speed under control. So I could apply the speed brake, but I have yet, see there, V-ref, I'm, I'm far too fast. So let's lower, uh, well, I'm going to put the flaps down to 50, or the gear first and then flaps. So it'll be gear, gear down, flaps 15. And I think I have left it a little bit too late. Let's just wait for it. There's the airport coming into view now. This is uh, an add-on scenery for Dublin. You can't really see it yet. So good. Let's uh, lower the gear and flaps 15. Brilliant. That's that bit done, and we're on profile. We're going down nicely, 166 knots now. We're going too fast. But look, I'm not going to, I'm not, don't shoot me over this, for those of you who are more experienced. And that is the uh, altitude radar, if you like. So that's a height above the surface, being the sea or the ground. 170 knots on descent and uh, increasing, actually. Now, uh, I'm gonna lower another stage of flaps. I'm a little bit late, I did say, I would have 30 flaps, okay, uh, it was at 147 knots. Now, I should have also bugged that speed, um, and now I won't get my, my V-Ref because I'm too late lowering the flaps, but there's no big deal. We're just Five, trying to find out how, to, how it works. So, I have armed my autopilot, I have a little button on my joystick, I'm going to disarm the autopilot or switch it off, and I'm flying it in manually now. I'm all manual, throttle is manual, rudder pedals, everything's manual. So let's see, let's see if I can uh, do a reasonably good landing. Um, my speed is decreasing rapidly, and I want to make sure I get that center line. I'm going to drive it in a little bit. Uh, and we're just coming over the touchdown markers now. A little bit of a, a bit of a long, floaty, floaty landing. Now I'll hold her off. There we go, lovely. I love Reality XP. Uh, that's what makes your head move in the cockpit. So, reverse thrust. And I'm going to take off the reverse thrust at about 80 knots. 80 knots. There's 80 knots. Reverse thrust off. Manual braking. And we're in Dublin. Oh, that was uh, interesting. Now, I have to tell you, um, it does take a bit of practice with the flight management computer and all this kind of stuff. I'm only learning as well, guys, okay? So do let me know in the comments if this helped you. If it didn't help you, let me know why, okay? Let me know why it was confusing so I can make my next video uh, video better. I know that I have made actually lots of mistakes and I'm seeing more mistakes as I'm watching this video while I'm editing it. But I started. I started badly. I know it's bad, but if you don't start badly, you have to start. And everybody starts badly. So start. If you don't start badly, you'll never start. So start badly.